Hi, I'm Kelly Thomas. Welcome to Ingenious Baby. Every week I'll interview leading experts to help you help your child reach their full potential so that your child can become all that they were born to be. Welcome to this baby. Today we're here with Rick Beato, co-founder of Neural, a music app that's designed to supercharge your baby's brain through high information music. He'll talk about the scientific research behind this, the astounding results he's seen with his own children, and provide tips on how this can help increase your own child's attention span, memory, language development, and ability to process information. Rick, thank you so much for being here. I am so fascinated by your neural app, and I wish I had known about it when my own kids, when I was pregnant with my own kids, who are two and four now. Tell us about your son in particular. I know you have three, three kids, but your son is amazing, I and mean, he's got perfect pitch, and he speaks all these languages, and his memory recall, and it, he's brilliant. Yeah, well, with, as most people that are parents know, if you don't have, when you have your first child, you really have no benchmarks to compare them to, unless you have family that has kids, or you've been around other little kids, but typically, most people don't have any, have any idea what a child's developmental, you know, uh, markers are, so I didn't really think anything of it. I would play Dylan, uh, I would make new playlists every month until Dylan was two. He didn't have any idea that anything was was unusual about Dylan's behavior or you know that he had any abilities or anything like that. Just never, uh, we would say to each other, Man, Dylan has a really good memory. We'd go to a restaurant and then six months later we'd go in, he'd only be you know two years old, but he would remember the, the you know, person's name that waited on us. And we always thought it was, we always would joke about that. Man, Dylan's got a great memory. Yeah. But uh, until I realized he had perfect pitch, it none of this dawned on me. Talk about the research. How did you come up with the actual songs and composer? What is high information music? I have a composer friend of mine that's Turkish. His name's Aydin Essen. Mm -hmm. It was really his music that gave me the idea of neural. I thought, uh, I had these concerts that I had recorded in the late 80s of his improvisations. He's just the most fantastic improviser that you, that you could imagine. And, and I thought, boy, if you played a baby, Aydin's music, would it sound normal to him? It was mostly just out of curiosity. So once I realized that Dylan had perfect pitch when he was, it was, when he was three, then I started saying, why does Dylan have perfect pitch? Because I have 18 nieces and nephews and none of them have perfect pitch. I mean, this is really highly unusual. Mm -hmm. Why Dylan and why not anyone else? So I started doing research and I watched a particular TED talk called The Linguistic Genius of Babies with Patricia Kuhl, mm -hmm. who is a professor at the University of Washington. She's done all these studies in um, basically in um, language acquisition with babies. Mm -hmm. So as, as I'm watching this TED talk, it occurred to me that there's this, when she talks about this critical window of learning opportunity mm -hmm. in the first nine months of a baby's life where their brains are wired to learn the algorithms of language. Mm -hmm. So they are, um, when they hear sounds, they're making uh, they have to decide where words begin and end and they have this recognition of phonemes mm -hmm. in there's about 6,500 languages that are spoken on earth mm -hmm. out of those languages there's 2,000 phonemes in English we use 44 of the 2,000 but all babies are pre-programmed to hear be able to hear the sounds of all 6,500 languages so they can hear these phonemes which are the sounds that make up syllables essentially so then it occurred to me and and then this this happens all the way up until about age seven. There's this first critical window that goes till age two or so. Mm -hmm. And then there's a second one that kids that can develop language uh, uh, fluency incredibly easy up until the age of six. Well, it just so happens that perfect pitch development, they never find kids that develop perfect pitch after the age of six. And I said to myself, well, that must be completely related because music is a language in the same way with sounds. The phonemes are the notes. The rhythm is the punctuation. I mean, there's all these similarities between them. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, this must be why Dylan has this uh, this incredible memory for, for numbers, for languages. It's all the same things are related to language acquisition. So it was, um, it was 
only afterwards that I that it occurred to me to look into this. Wow. So that's where I came up with the idea of neural because people started asking me, what did you do with Dylan? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I had, you know, 600 songs and, and two years of playlists that I played for him. So, um, so that was that that was really the impetus. It was kind of that the, the theory developed afterwards by reading a lot of scientific studies on it. I think that 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 the science and and the the neural neural imaging that's happening now that they can do with that it's not invasive with babies is really uh, changing the way that people think about what infants are able to accomplish. And I think that that's really exciting. And I think that's going to have incredible impact in the future in, uh, in, in kids' ability to learn. Why the particular composer and um, what's different about your music versus listening to Mozart or something like that? Okay, so <clears throat> there's a predictability in, in uh, most classical music up until the late Romantic era and the early 20th century composers. You're talking, you, you know, um, maybe from Liszt, Wagner, Chopin, Beethoven, on into Debussy, Ravel, and then 20th century co composers like Schoenberg and Stravinsky, things like that. So I would play though that music along with Bach. I'd play some of the uh, Bach preludes and fugues, but mainly the, the really highly layered music. And a lot of um, baby apps, people say, oh, music is great for babies, but then they play these synthesized yeah. um pieces that have no content there's no there's no melodic content other than the melody line and maybe an auxiliary bass line or something and it's usually done with synthesizers mm -hmm. babies need to hear the complexity of an orchestra they need to hear music that's unpredictable M much of mozart is predictable you can predict where the cadences are going and babies actually tune out unless they're they're um unless there's an element of surprise to the music. So jazz being improvised, there's a lot of surprise, especially with really sophisticated jazz. Mm -hmm. And this composer friend of mine, Aydin, has really sophisticated music, harmonically, meaning the chords that he plays, and melodically, the types of melodies that use all the notes of the chromatic scale and are really technically dazzling a lot of the things that are just... Um, I mean, it's a lot for a lot of people to listen to because it's very, very complex, but I believe yeah. that it radically changes babies' brains from listening to it. The funny thing is people tend to play them very simplistic music yeah, that, the baby you know, music. I mean, it's, it's just the opposite of what our babies are able to do. I mean, babies can learn so much. Right. And people don't realize the potential they have, especially they play the, the kids' music that you hear is... You know, not, I guess, having the same impact as, as <laughs> this high information music. Mozart effect, for example, all the research, isn't it inconclusive that it actually makes babies smarter? It is inconclusive. Um, that's, and, and I believe that, that um, so, some, of the, uh, some of the studies that Patricia Cool has done on mm -hmm. uh, language learning with babies talks about this thing called the social brain. The social brain is, is essentially when a parent is interacting with a baby, they're speaking to them, the babies will typically look at your mouth and see how words are formed. Mm -hmm. And they'll look, they, they get these emotional cues from the parent. Um, in her experiments that she did with, uh, in her TED talk that, that uh, you can watch, she, she brought in a group of babies. She had three different groups. She had one group of babies that were exposed to a Mandarin speaker mm -hmm. over the course of six weeks. There were, um, I think there were, uh, um, I believe nine 25 minute exposures to a woman just reading for 25 minutes a piece. The babies that interacted with her in person had the, uh, were able to recognize the phonemes of Mandarin uh, to the level of a baby that had only heard Mandarin for their entire life that were 10 months old. E babies that had, that had grown up in China that had only heard Mandarin, these babies that had been exposed from nine weeks to 10 and a half weeks, just a few times, 
were able to achieve that same level of mastery of the sounds, the phonemes of Mandarin. There were two other control groups that watched videos and one that only listened to audio, and it had no effect on them. Only when a, when a human being was involved, because it involves, as she says, the social brain. Mm. Well, when I was playing the music with Dylan, I was interacting with him the whole time for a couple hours a day. I'd dance around with him, I'd mm. sing along with the pieces, I would tap out the rhythms on his body and I would, so I would involve his social brain. I didn't realize I was doing that at the time, but everything that she said, I thought to myself, I did that. I did that. Wow. I did, I did what she's talking about, but I used complex music. And then it, then I started doing more research in it. And there's, um, uh, and there's a lot of literature that, uh, that, that, that is related to this. We have a lot on our website if people are interested in, uh, and taking a look at it. So um, you were saying that the parent interaction, so what do you suggest? I mean, it's not just playing the music to your baby. What do you need to be doing while, you're, while they're listening you need to it? You need to interact with them and make mm -hmm. them realize that it's important to you. Uh, otherwise, it has no effect. So the idea of taking taking a baby and just playing in the music is, um, there, there is no reason to do that. And I tell people, if you're not gonna interact with your babies, this will have no effect on them. You have to actually engage them in active music listening. And that means dancing with them or singing along or um, what exactly? Tapping, tapping the rhythm to mm -hmm. the music with them, mm. uh, just looking them in the eyes while you're listening and, and playing with them, making them realize that it's something that they should take statistical analysis on essentially. Because that's why they start to take, that's the theory on this is they begin to take statistics and pick up those language algorithms mm -hmm. Because, uh, because of the interaction between the parent and the child. So your app, you say you're zero to six, but you really focus on the two, which my kids are now two and four. So what mm -hmm. can someone do? What, what goes on after two then? What can you do to help sort of facilitate development? Is there anything you can do? Have we missed an opportunity once they turn two? Well, the first thousand days of a baby's life are the most important. Babies are born with 100 billion neurons. They, are, uh, they, they learn. All these things in the first year, there, there was a great article a couple years ago in National Geographic um, where they talked about the baby's first year. Mm -hmm. Think about babies learn to, you know, in their first year, typically they'll learn how to sit up, they'll learn how to crawl, they learn how to eat, they learn how to walk sometimes, they learn how to stand up, mm -hmm. they learn the beginnings of language, they learn all these incredibly complex things that are really complex algorithms. The, the balance that it takes to walk or even to stand up or even to sit up. Mm -hmm. are really, really complex ideas. And there's a lot of mathematics involved with this, the, you know, of, with concerning balance and things like that. Just like there's algorithms to learn how to swim. You have to know what it feels like to stay afloat in the water. And your brain has to learn these algorithms, just like riding a bike. There's very complex math that goes on in, in, in a person's brain when they're learning these things. Well, babies are really able to learn them in the first critical window, the first thousand days of a baby's life. Mm -hmm. I'm talking from conception to age two is those that are the thousand days, essentially. Okay. Now, after age two, there are things that you can do with your babies. You can get them involved in music classes. You can, uh, beginning at age four or so, you can start piano lessons typically with, with children. And I highly recommend it. There's nothing other than speaking a, a second language, which is comparable. Mm -hmm. um, there's nothing better that a child could do than learn a learn an instrument and learn how to read music, because that is tremendously beneficial for motor skills. It involves both hemispheres of the brain because you're dealing with coordination, motor coordination between both hands. I mean, it's it's it's. Um, I think every child, if they had the opportunity to take piano lessons or take an instrument. Piano is the easiest one and all children can play it for mm -hmm. the most part, beginning around four and a half or so. So that's what you can do with your kids. That's what I tell people. My son, he's like, he said he wants to take violin. Violin is the other instrument that you can take when you're four, when you're four years old. We're doing Suzuki. That's exactly what we're yeah. doing. Yeah. Cause yeah. all ear based. And my daughter who's yeah. two says she wants to play piano. So We'll see what happens. I was trained in Suzuki violin. My undergraduate degree is in oh. classical music, and uh, I have a, I taught Suzuki strings. I had students that were four and a half years old that I taught when I was in college. Yeah. And uh, it's amazing what they can learn. 
It is, it is. And he, the fact that he's interested in it too is, is um, even That's helps even more. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's fascinating and um, I love what you're doing. Where can people find more information about Neural? You can go to our website. It's just N-U-R-Y-L.com. And there's uh, a number of scientific papers that, that uh, we have concerning the, um, this uh, music immersion in babies. And uh, you can download a trial version of the app and kind of get a feel for it. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your insight and um, all the information about your children and, and what they're doing as well. So. Very welcome. All right. If you know someone who would be a great fit for the show, come on over to IngeniousBaby.com and share your tips and story ideas. You are your baby's first and best teacher.